What it do everybody, this is Junior Zamarone coming at you from Ukiah, California for a special edition of Baseball, Bobbleheads, and Brews. On today's show, we're celebrating one year of Triple B. That's right, one year of Baseball, Bobbleheads, and Brews. Then we're going to be talking about a special bobblehead in my collection that I think is pretty rare. And finally, we're going to review some of the best beers that we've had on the show, including the number one beer in the year of Triple B. So in the words of Cool and the Gang, celebrate good times, come on, it's a celebration. seems like just yesterday that I was sitting right here at this table in front of this camera right here with the help of my wife I stumbled my way through my very first episode. What it do everybody this is Junior Zamarone coming at you from Ukiah California for the first episode of Baseball Bobbleheads and Brews. Today is the premiere episode of my tour with you, talking all things baseball, most things bobbleheads, and a lot of beer. Now that episode was super special to me because we were paying tribute to the legendary great one, Roberto Clemente. So definitely coming up next week, we'll be doing the 2021 Roberto Clemente Day episode, so keep your eyes peeled for that one. In this journey, I found a voice for what I like to do. Now, I've always loved the game of baseball, and now that I have kids of my own, I can share that same love with them. Then you have bobbleheads. To me, it's like an art form. The way that they're manufactured and put together, you can see the beauty in what's being created. Then you also have brews. Now don't get me wrong, brews can lead down a very dangerous path, especially if you are dealing with personal demons. But for me, it's the experiences that come with those hops that I'll remember the most. Sort of like all the smiles, laughs, and the moments that I will cherish and remember, like sharing that last drink bar side with my unofficial co-host Brent before he moved to Texas. Now, Bruce also brought me something special. Through this platform of doing baseball, bobbleheads, and brews, I was able to find a job as the NorCal sale representative for Iron Ox Brewing Company out of Santa Rosa, California. So if you have an idea, invest in yourself and put in that work because you never know the craziest of dreams can become reality. Now the reality for me is that we're 25 episodes into this journey and we've had some really fantastic episodes, like our Oktoberfest drinking contest, where yours truly won the championship boot. Ladies and gentlemen, let the drinking begin in three, <laughs> two, one. Like just getting ready on number two now, and you guys, he's on three. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna God lose damn. This one. Oh, man. How many subscribers do you lose if you're the only one that peaks? <laughs> Negative three. Because I'm not gonna get there. There's no. 
confusion on something. If you burp it all up and puke it out, it doesn't count. You can do it all over again. You do it all over again. You only have three subscribers, so. <laughs> <laughs> Can I open the other ones and just try them? <laughs> <laughs> See how they are? I mean, after Junior wins. Yeah, he's uh, him and Dustin are just going at it over there. I don't know, I'm gonna fucking beat him up. I don't know. Good he Lord. did a fucking animal before he got here, though. <laughs> Ladies and hey, gentlemen, you can take a break. I think they concede. You can wow. watch, dude. You just have to watch. No, you well, can't. You're gonna win. You be a man and win. Huh. That, I'm impressed. Deep Finish off with any of them? <laughs> yeah, I'll just clean second place over here. You gonna take a break now? He's definitely working. Yeah, you have a bit. You could you can slow it down. No, nope. <laughs> alright. He's gonna go for it. Alright. Fun walking his ass home. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. It's like drinking a half a glass of tequila. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your winner is Junior. Now you hey, now you gotta chug another one out of the out of the booth. Then we also got invited down to Iron Ox Brewing Company by Kevin and Vince, and they premiered three new beers with us and gave us wonderful insights into the brewing industry. Now I look forward to possibly doing that same thing with our good friends out at Laughing Monk and then maybe even Sudwork Brewing Co. Now, some of my favorite episodes are centered around my childhood idols, Catfish Hunter and Juan Marichal. Then you also had our Black Aces episode, and it now holds an even bigger place in my heart because the godfather of the group, Jim Mudcat Grant, recently passed away. Rest in peace, Mr. Grant. Then you had the bar side beer chats with my brother-in-laws along with my boy farmer and chief and my brother mexi steve those were full of laughter and killer beer and i can't forget about our beer sherpa shoddy from the west side renaissance market he always kept us stockpiled with phenomenal beer so if you're in the Ukiah area or just passing through, you definitely have to stop at the West Side Renaissance Market to get some killer food and even better beer. Now, Shadi, I look forward to doing an episode with you soon, maybe looking for the best kettle sour out there. Now, I got to shout out a couple guys that helped me break into the game. That's right, from the Bobble Bros podcast, I got my Yankee bro and my Red Sox bro. They had me on their podcast and then did me the favor and jumped on a Zoom episode where we were looking for the best cerveza out there and we were talking about custom bobbleheads. I also got to shout out my boy from Instagram, D from Beer Talk Now. You guys showed me so much support and brought a youngster like me into the game and guided me, and I really appreciate that. Now, D, don't forget, you gotta come down to Santa Rosa and we gotta be able to try, for the first time for you, Pliny the Elder. Now, I don't know exactly what is in store for the next year but buckle up and get ready for the ride because you better believe there's plenty more baseball, bobbleheads, and brews to come.
fantastic bobbleheads on the show so far in year one. I gotta shout out our good friends at AGP because you guys had the most bobbleheads that I featured on the show. Now, you guys aren't the only cats in the game, so I got a shout out as well, Success Brands and Destroyer Promotion for the wonderful bobbleheads that you bring to the game. Now, speaking of wonderful bobbleheads, I got to give a huge shout out to at NorCal Nodder. Now, he has three bobbleheads that I hold dear in my collection. We have Harvey the Rabbit, then we have a dual gold glove holding Mike Norris, which came autographed. And then he has the best group bobblehead that I have in my collection, and that's the Charlie Finley bobblehead. Your work speaks for itself and is phenomenal, just like your Dave Henderson charity golf bobblehead. I hope somewhere down the line I can try to add that to my collection, but I already know that that's going to be really hard. And then on Twitter, you released a Joe Rudy bobblehead. I already told you there, shut up and take my money because I definitely want that in my collection. So if anybody's watching, I highly recommend you go out and follow on Twitter and Instagram at NorCal Nodder. That way you can check out his phenomenal work for yourself. This week's bobblehead, to me, is super rare. I believe it was given out in 2014 as a promotional item from MLB Network for the hit show Intentional Talk featuring Chris Rose and Kevin Millar. This bobblehead is made by our good friends at AGP. The bobblehead sits in at six and a half inches tall and the base is huge. It's four and a half inches in length and four inches wide. I believe that this bobblehead is made of ceramic because it is so heavy that I think it weighs roughly about a pound and a half. Now, just like everything from AGP, the lettering right here on the nameplate is raised, but unfortunately, right here on the TV screen, you have the IT logo and it's just a water transfer mark. Helping this bobblehead look really cool is textured hair. I mean, you can actually see the highlights in Millar's hair. Now, the paint is good, but not great, especially in the back area where you have them sitting down in the chair. Now, another cool feature that AGP always tends to have is that there's a lot of texture on either the shirt or the jersey. It's unknown how many of these bobbleheads were actually produced. If I would guess, I'd have to say less than 5,000 of them are out there. Now, I acquired this one back in 2014 at the Oakland A's Root Beer Float Day. You see, Chris Rose was out there because he wanted to help raise money for juvenile diabetes. I was spending the whole entire event chasing down A's players and getting their autographs. And by the time I swung by his table, I noticed in his hand this bobblehead. Now, I ran over as quickly as I could and I let him know, Chris, I'm a huge fan of yours from back in your best damn sports show period days. And I have to add this bobblehead to my collection. I told him, if I give you $20 for your charity, can I take that bad boy home? And he said, yes, score. 
Now, the cool thing about it was that that same day, he autographed it right there on the desk for me. Fast forward a couple years, and the bobblehead was sitting in my dual bobblehead collection. And that's even after I saw some of these sell for $200. August 29th of 2020, my bobblehead and me made a live version of Intentional Talk where I asked Kevin Millar through Twitter if he would sign my bobblehead, thus completing my project. Now, we're over a year later, and that still hasn't happened, but you better believe that I'm still trying to get that done. As far as this bobblehead goes, if you collect duels, or if you collect anything related with the TV show, you definitely have to acquire this, because you never know when one's gonna come to market. So react quickly and add one as soon as you see it. have been fantastic. I mean, on episode one, we had the unofficial beer of baseball bobbleheads and brew from Pyramid Brewery, the Curveball Blonde Ale. Then, I'm really spoiled and have wonderful local breweries around me like Anderson Valley Brewing Company, Hen House, and the emerging Iron Ox Brewing Company. Now, on the show, I even had my first ghost shout out to 26 Degree Brewing Company out of Florida for bringing me the Margarita Ghost, which featured tequila, a tequila beer, which I am constantly still looking for many, many more. I also enjoyed my first stout on this show from our friends out at Old Kaz in Runner Park, California. Then, on multiple episodes, we featured Laughing Monk. And believe you me, I'm definitely going to come out there and do an episode with you guys and feature it here on our show. Then, we also featured Strike Brewing Company out of San Jose on multiple episodes, as well as Revision Brewing Company out of Reno, Nevada. We also featured some really killer blonde ales from like in Texas, Trinity Forest. Then we also had the Kolsch from Almanac Brewing Company in Alameda. And most recently, Huss Brewing Co. out of Tempe, Arizona. Now I look forward to getting out of my comfort zone and maybe doing a battle stout, trying to find the best stout around us, and then also that kettle sour episode with my boy Shadi. But if I'd have to say my top five beers of the shows, well, let's get into that. The number five beer that we featured on year one comes from the Almanac Brewing Company their true Kolsch. 
That's probably my second favorite blonde ale out there behind Pyramid. Coming in at number four, we also have a multi-episode winner from Oakland United Beer Work, the Zapato de Baile Mexican Style Lager. Now I'm still searching for what cerveza is gonna knock off that crown off of that beer. Then number three, from Trinity Forest out in Texas, their blonde ale blew me away. And coming in at number two, we have a collab beer from Hen House, Pacifica, and Eagle Rock Brewing Company called Down For My Day Ones. Now that beer came in the very first episode of 2021 as we were ushering in the new year and saying goodbye to the pandemic. I need to find that beer again or they need to produce some more. And in the number one spot, it comes from our battle, East Coast versus West Coast IPA. Now this week's beer comes from episode 14 which featured my boy Shoddy and the unofficial co-host Brent. And we were searching for the clear cut winner of the battle of the IPA East Coast versus West Coast. And going into it, Iron Ox Brewing Company was the underdog. They were going up against heavy hitters like the Juicy IPA from Full Circle Brewing Company and the godfather, Pliny the Elder. Now they came in with the unfiltered West Coast IPA, Oximus Prime. It holds up at 7.1% alcohol by volume and features Laura Strata and Simcoe hops. Now on the can, it said that it was supposed to be really danky and had a copious amount of hops. Now, in reality, it was well balanced, had a really good earthy flavor to it, had a little bit of hop on the back end, but no bitterness, and it had a very smooth mouth feel. We found that it was the number one beer that we had all year and that happened back in episode 14. So let's crack this bad boy open and see if 10 episodes, it still has the same pop. Now again, I got a shout out my boy on Instagram at numskull artwork because he came out with this beautiful can art. It pops and that's one of the reasons why I got it on the show when we saw it. My kid loves Transformers and that's Optimus Prime and Optimus Prime is a badass. Now this beer has a really sweet aroma and that, I mean, come on, when it says on the label, it's very danky and have a copious amount of hops. Now, remember, I like my head very minimal. Some people like anywhere from two to three fingers, but that color is crystal clear, a nice frothy head, and there's very slow release. I'm definitely getting a little bit of that dankiness now that it's out of the can. And there is a slight bit of a bite on the front end, but it still has that earthy flavor to it. Um, for me, I pick up a variation of a little bit of resin so you do get that dankiness because it's hanging out in the mouth and it perfumes it up into the nose 
but I also get that earthiness which brings an umami. So it's like salt without being salt. You know, it triggers that that um, umami flavor in your brain. So that's where I think the earthiness comes from. It could even be um, woody. Still a phenomenal beer. Like for me, it was a one and done, and I declared this beer the number one choice in the battle of the East Coast and West Coast. Ten episodes later, this beer is still phenomenal. So I look forward to having this beer again when it comes back out. Now, I know what you're going to say. I have to say these things because I now represent Iron Ox Brewing Company. Before this episode ran, I had no affiliation to them. I brought them in back on that episode and I've not reviewed any of our beers since then. I want to let you guys know that on this channel I'm not going to fluff you up. I've seen a lot of beers that we've had on blind taste tests that weren't that great. We do want to point out the good things that we experienced in them and it's up to you to see if you like the beers. So you're never going to get a skewed opinion from me because I want to make sure that you understand that my beer style may be different than yours. So get out there, try all these different beers that we've featured and the beers that we will feature in the future and see if you like them. For me, so far in year one, Oximus Prime is still holding the mantle of being the best beer. Now we're coming up into the latter part of 2021, so let's see if I can find a beer that will knock this one off the perch. And there's a lot of up and coming breweries that I need to come and try, like Helicoastal out in Oakland. So I'm always gonna be searching out for wonderful beers. And right now, this one, number one in my heart, like Joe Kingman out of the game plan. Now I want to thank everybody for hanging out with me in the very first year of baseball bobbleheads and brews. I look forward to what the next year will host and you definitely believe that I will be linking you up in the description with a lot of the breweries that we featured throughout the years and recapped in this episode. Plus, we're going to link you up with AGP Destroyer Promotion Success Brands so you can find out all their bobbleheads that have come out in this year and what's coming out in next year. I urge everybody to hit that like button and subscribe because without you guys, I wouldn't be here and I appreciate each and every one of you. So don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Baseball, Bobbleheads, and Brews.